Okay, I am back and we are doing factoring. And so um, the first problem that we're going to start with is 6x squared plus 19x minus 20. So we want to find out our, um, well, the first thing we ask ourselves is there a, a GCF that I can pull out of everything. So a lot of times I look for, um, are all the coefficients odd, I'm even, because then I can pull out a two, are they all multiples of three or multiples of five, even multiples of 10? 19 is a prime number, and so um, we aren't going to find anything that's gonna come out of all three of these. Um, so we don't have a GCF. It's a trinomial, so we can't factor it by grouping. So we're going to have to um, use our sum and product to factor this. So um, the product that I am looking for is I um, take my a value and I multiply it here. So six times negative 20 is going to be negative 120. So that is the product that we are looking for. And our sum is always b, our b value. So it doesn't matter if I've got a coefficient in front of the x squared or not, the b value is always gonna be my sum. So I am looking for two numbers multiplied together give me negative 120 and added together give me 19. Now, because my product is negative, because my product is negative, I am looking for one positive number and one negative number because my product is negative. Okay, so I am just gonna start writing down some numbers. So we know um, that six times 20 gives me 120. Okay, um, I'm sure 15 goes into 120. So you can just say, okay, well 120 divided by 15, um, is that gonna be eight? So I think 15 times eight, so that's not gonna be it. What about 30? 30 goes into it, so we've got 30 times four. Um, none of those are working. What about 12 and 10? Um, so 12 times 10. Um, I don't see any combination that's gonna get me back to 19. So we've got to keep thinking about numbers. So 12 goes into it, does 14. So you could divide, 120 divided by 14. So we could see if, if that works, 120 divided by 14, I don't think it does, but we can certainly try that. 120 divided by 14 um, is not perfect, it doesn't go in evenly. Um, so we've got 12, maybe eight, we could see if eight goes in to 120. Um, eight does go, but we've already got that, eight and 15. So we've got 6 and 20, 12 and 10, Ooh, 25 doesn't go into it, 4 does, um, so that would be, well, 4 and 30, so I don't think it's prime, it's definitely not prime. Okay, so something is prime when you can't find any of the numbers that goes into this. Uh, if you can't find two numbers that multiplied together equal negative 120 and added together equal 19. This is not prime, although it might, you, you might start getting frustrated because we can't seem to find it. Um, 3 and 40 are another one. Um, do you see this right here, 12 and 10? Um, sometimes when I get stuck and I don't know what to do next, um, I will double one of these numbers. Like I would either double 10 or I would double 12. Um, so if I doubled 12 and got 24, um, 24 does go evenly into 120 and it's 24 and five. Okay, so I'm gonna make the negative, and so that, those are my two numbers, 24 and five, and those are more difficult to find, so you have to continue to guess and check and continue to go through that. Um, let's 
and then we have to decide which one is negative. And because our sum is positive 19, that means our five has got to be the negative one. And so now what we do is we split this 19x. And we are taking 6x squared, and I am going to have plus 24x mi minus 5x minus 20. Now remember, this right here, 24x minus 5x, is the same thing as 19x. We are wor working backwards. We are working backwards to get to our two binomials. So I have not changed the value of anything here. I have just split that term. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these first two terms right here. I'm looking at 6x squared and 24x, and I am finding what can I pull out of both of those. So I'm going to pull out a 6x, and then I am left with x plus 4, because 6x times x is 6x squared, 6x times 4 is 24x. Okay. Now I'm going to look at my second two terms and I can pull out a negative 5. Negative 5 is common to both of those. And then I am left with x plus 4. Okay, so this factors to 6x minus 5 times x plus 4. And the way that we can check that is you can FOIL it to check. You can FOIL it to make sure you get back to the original trinomial. Okay, let's move on to the next one, number 10. Okay, number 10, um, the first thing that we always ask ourselves, is there a GCF that I can pull out of both of these? Is there a GCF? And in this situation, there is. I can pull a 3 out of both of these. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to pull a 3 out. So I have 3 times what gives me 12x squared, and that is 4x squared. And then 3 times what gives me negative 3, and that's going to be minus 1. And we would be tempted to stop there. We would like to stop. But we also need to ask ourselves, is this a difference of perfect squares? Okay. A difference of perfect squares and the answer to that is yes and remember perfect squares are 1 4 9 16 25 so 1 is 1 squared 4 is 2 squared 9 is 3 squared 16 is 4 squared 25 is 5 squared so these are all perfect squares so in this situation we are going to take the square root of 4x squared, and the square root of that is 2x. So I'm going to have 2x on each one of these. So 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared. Then I have got the square root of 1 is just 1. One of them is plus, and one of them is minus. So my final answer here is 3 times 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And that only works if you have a minus sign there. If you don't have a minus sign there, it doesn't work. Okay, it's got to be difference of perfect squares. Okay, now number 11 is a special, a, a, a special factoring case. Um, this is a perfect cube, um, and we are not focusing on perfect cubes in this class, but 64 is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 4 to the third, and t, that's a perfect cube, okay? Um, it does come up a little bit later. Um, it's not something that you need to worry about in this class, but that is a, a perfect cube. So you may omit this one on your homework, okay? Now, number 12, let's look at number 12. Um, first thing we ask ourselves, GCF. Is there a GCF that we can take out of everything? And for this situation, there is. There's a GCF that we can take out. So, um, and it's two. Um, I would say four, but four won't go into 30. So it's actually just two. So we're gonna take a two and look right here. X, 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 okay? So we can take an X out of everything. 
okay? So 2x, and um, I'm gonna show you something in just a second. It would be a little confusing if I did it now. So we're gonna deal with this negative sign in just a second. Um, but right now I'm just gonna take this two out. So I've got 15 plus 2x minus 16, x squared. Now notice when you look at that, notice when you look at that how you've got your your x squared is down here. Now we could still do it, but to be able to identify my sum and product, I have to have it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. ax squared plus bx plus c. I have to have it in that format. And so I don't have this one in that format. So I'm gonna rearrange this. So I've got two x, and then I've got negative 16 x squared, um, plus two x, plus 15. Now, there's nothing wrong with multiplying your negative 16 times your positive 15 and getting a negative product. That, there, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and that's a fine way to do it, and you can pull out your negatives and everything's gonna be fine. Some students prefer to factor out a negative one. So instead of having two X on the outside, this is an option. You don't have to do it this way. It's just an option. You could have negative two X on the outside. Then you would have 16 X squared minus two X minus 15. That is just an option. You don't have to do it that way. Okay, I just want you to realize that it, it is an option. You're going to get to the same place and it's gonna be factored two different ways, but because of that negative, you, you would still be okay. This is an okay and a fully correct way to do it. We're gonna go ahead and leave it like this. So just so that we can, we can look at it this way. So I'm still gonna multiply my negative 16 and my positive 15. Negative 16 and positive 15. 15. So 16 times 15 is going to be 240 and it's going to be negative. So my product that we're looking for, my product is negative 240. Okay, and my sum that I'm looking for is 2. So because my product is negative, I am looking for one positive number and one negative number one positive number and one negative number. And those numbers are gonna be super close together. They're gonna to be very, very close together because my sum is so low. And so I'm really looking for numbers that, um, like 15 and 17 or 16 and 18 or 20 and 22. So um, those are the numbers that we're looking for because my sum is so low. I'm not looking at numbers like 24 and negative 10 because those numbers are so far apart that doesn't give me a sum that is low enough. So let's start looking at things that can be divided by um, 24 or 240. Um, so we know that 24 goes into it. I wonder if 15 goes into it. And 15 does. So 15 and 16. Now those are too close together. So 15 times 16 is 240, but that won't work. So let's see if 14 goes into 240. So we have 240 divided by 14, and um, that doesn't work. So we are still looking for some other numbers that are too apart. I don't think 17 goes into it, um, but we can certainly try to see if 17 goes into it, and 17 does not. Um, so let's keep trying. Okay, so did anyone catch my mistake? So I made a mistake here, and I'm wondering if anybody caught it. And if you did, good for you, okay? But I did make a pretty big mistake. So I am gonna have to start this problem over. And I wanna show you where my mistake is. My mistake is right here, okay? There's my mistake. So I should have had eight X squared right there, eight X squared. So instead of having negative 16 X squared right here, we should have negative eight X squared. So I made a mistake, it wasn't working out, so I went back and checked my work, 
and that's how you find out when you make a mistake. So I'm gonna write mistake. Okay, and then we are going to start this problem over. So I am going to erase this so that we can start over. But I want everybody to realize that this right here is where my mistake is. And these things happen. They happen to all of us. So um, that's why it's really important that we kind of go back and we look at our, our stuff and we make sure that we don't make those mistakes. So I am going to pause. Okay, I am back for us to try this again. So... The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out my 2x, and I'm going to have 15x plus 2x, okay, let's go back one more time, okay, 2x times 15 plus 2x minus 8x squared, okay, I think I have it correct now. Um, so I'm going to have my 2x here and then I'm going to rewrite it. So I'm going to have negative 8x squared plus 2x plus 15. Now the reason that I rewrote it is so that we can multiply negative 8 and positive 15. Those are our a and c. So it doesn't matter what order everything is in. To identify your a and your c, your a is always your coefficient with your x squared, your b is your coefficient with your x, and your c is your constant. So rewriting it in this format helps you. So the product that I am looking for this time is negative eight times 15. Negative eight times 15, and it will be negative, and our sum that we are looking for is two. And this actually works out much nicer and much kinder because our numbers are negative 10 and positive 12, okay? So we're still gonna keep our two x on the outside and I'm gonna have negative eight x squared minus 10 x plus 12 x. And remember, all we've done is we have split that middle term right here, we have split this term, and when we add negative 10x and 12x together, we get positive 2x. Negative 10x plus 12x is positive 2x, okay? So, make sure that you understand that we still have equivalent expressions. 2x broken down into negative 10x plus 12x is still 2x. And so now we are just dealing with the stuff that's inside the, the brackets. So I want to know what can I pull out of this. Um, and I can pull out a negative 2x from that. So I've still got my 2x out here. And then I'm going to bring out a negative 2x. And I'm going to say uh, 4x minus 5. Okay. Now I'm going to look at 12x plus 15, and I can take out a three there. So I am going to pull out a three, and then I am gonna be left with 4x plus five. Okay. And that doesn't work. Uh, nope, this is it. That should be addition. Okay, so now we have 2x times negative 2x plus 3 and 4x plus 5. Now, this has been kind of a problem. There's been lots of different mistakes and different things that I've looked back on that. So this one, it would be completely reasonable Um, to multiply all this out just to make sure that we are on the right track. Um, and you would do that by foiling. Um, sometimes problems are like that. They kind of give you a headache. And so this is one on a test that you might want to walk away from for a little while, that you may want to um, do other problems for a little bit, um, then come back to it and look over it again. That's probably when I would have found my mistake like I had on the last screen. Sometimes problems are like that and it's it's frustrating and our brain starts to, to, to play tricks on us. And so don't ever 
hesitate to stop and say, okay, I must have messed up something somewhere um, because it happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. Okay, let's move on to number 13. Um, hopefully number 13 will be a little, we'll be able to breathe a little bit on number 13. And so, um, this one does not have a GCF, um, but we always ask ourselves, is there a GCF that um, I can pull out of everything? The answer to that is no. Um, can I factor it by grouping? And I can factor this one by grouping. Anytime that you have um, grouping, anytime you have four terms, always be on the radar for factoring by grouping. And so I can factor this one by grouping. Um, so I can take an X out of both of those. So I'm gonna have X, then I'm gonna have X minus Y, okay? And then the next set, I'm gonna have four X minus four Y. So I'm gonna take a four out. So I'm gonna say plus four, and I'm gonna have X minus Y. So my answer here is X plus four and X minus y and that is kind of a breath of fresh air after the last one that we just did um so always be aware um, of the different types of problems and don't hesitate to skip it if something is giving you a headache skip it and come back to it um, that is always super super helpful okay now our last one that we're going to do for factoring is a doozy 24 n squared plus 55 n minus 24 and it would be super nice um, if we could factor out a GCF and unfortunately uh, we can't there's nothing in 24 there's nothing in 55 and negative 24 that's common So um, one thing I want you to know about this particular problem is I think that the numbers are, are really very, very large. Um, and I don't think it's fair to give you um, a problem with the numbers that are this large on a test because you don't have access to a calculator. Um, so while you may be asked to deal with numbers this large on homework or a quiz, when you um, do have access to a calculator, you won't be able, you won't have them this large um, when you don't. So kind of rest assured that um, numbers this large will not be um, on your test. So uh, what we have to do first is we have to do 24 times negative 24. And that number is negative 576. That is our product and that is an incredibly large number. Um, because it's negative, we know that we're looking for one positive number and one negative number. Okay, our sum is 55 and so what I do in this situation is I just start um, I, I take negative 576 and I start dividing it by things um, the first thing I did was I divided it by 12 and so 12 times 48 gives me negative 576 that doesn't get to our sum of 55 so then I divided it by 16 um, and so 16 times 36 gives me that that product but again it's it, I've got one positive number and one negative number and that's not going to give me to 55 we also have 24 times 24 but we know that that's not it either so my next thought was well I'm going to try 9 I'm going to try 9 so I divided um, 576 by 9 and it really is a guess and check it's guessing and checking until you get to the right sum when I divided by nine, I got 64. And so at that point, because I've got one positive number and one negative number, um, I was able to determine that that would give me a sum of 55. So my nine is gonna be negative. So nine times 64 gives me a product of negative 576. Negative nine plus 64 gives me a sum of 55. And so at this point, I have my numbers, and it's finding those numbers that continues the guess and the check and the guess and the check. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna split our middle term. So I have 24 n squared minus nine n plus 64 n minus 24, okay? So I am gonna look at my first two terms right here, okay? Um, I know that three goes into both. Um, so I've got three n. So three n times six, nope, not six n, eight n. It would be eight. Okay. So three n times eight n. 
um, and then I have 3n times negative 3. Okay. Now, um, next I look at 64 and minus 24, and the number that goes into both of those is 8. Um, so I'm going to have plus 8. 8 times 8n gives me 64n. 8 times negative 3 gives me negative 24. So I have 3n plus 8. 8n minus 3. Okay, and that is the end of our factoring. Now, um, I would say that these on the homework were a little bit more challenging. Um, on, on the end, I think that on your test, they'll be uh, not quite as challenging as what's on your homework. Now, I do intend to do the problems 15 through 22. I just have to go teach class downtown. Um, and so <clears throat> I can't do that quite yet. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and upload these two, but know that the next one is coming. Um, factoring is something that's gonna stick with you always. So for all of your math stuff, even in your chemistry and your biology, factoring is going to stick around. So you definitely want to make sure that you've got it. So um, be prepared for the quiz and I will see you in a couple hours with the rest of the problems. Thanks.